You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful, thank you. Um, if you kneel with me, we'll, we'll begin. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together again. I pray that you will continue to teach us and guide us. May we find joy in, in this journey. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's sufficient evidence Ellen White says so for the truth of our message. But what causes people to accept or reject is not about the quantity of external evidence. If you look for hooks to hang doubts upon, you will find them. Even if you fabricate them for yourself. God gave us a parable just for this point. The rich man and Lazarus. The people I love will listen if someone just rose from the dead. But God says it doesn't work that way. It's easy to think that God could just provide irrefutable evidence. If there was a visible pillar by fire, pillar of fire, everyone would accept and follow the lamb. We have an abundant amount of evidence that that is not how it works. Evidence of external events, especially predictions, are not and cannot be the anchor of our faith. That has... That has never been the purpose of time setting. And we should let go of any idea that it is this that will give us credibility with Adventism. That is a mindset we have been fighting since 2018. when 2019 was readily accepted, while two streams of information was rejected. Putting faith in the excitement of the fulfillment of external events. rather than the difficult truths that were to change heart and mind. Members should have latched hold of two streams of information.
surrendered their will to truth, regardless of how that truth made them feel. And ran with it. Completely changed their political views on the level of the heart. If our Australian classes are showing us anything, they're showing just how little two streams, streams of information was understood or accepted. Every shaking sense is connected to the issues of freedom and equality. But what, but what was said on external events was rapidly accepted. until people wanted a hook to hang doubts upon. Only then, only when the, the heart message became unpalatable, Bitter, did people find hooks for doubt? This history should serve as a warning to us. But also as we speak to Adventism. What we think should attract people to this movement. We've been discussing the way mark of Panium. Where God instructs his people in more detail. about the nature of the Sunday law. And how his people can pass the test of that history. These waymarks are connected to important external events. The internal of Panium was building upon the internal of Raphia. You would expect so. The formalization is built upon the increase of knowledge. Radical Feminism of late October 2021. Built upon the subject of feminism as taught in 2019. At the Brazil camp meeting, we laid the groundwork for this. We know that the waymark of Panium is an information war between the King of the North and the King of the South. We know that it is the King of the, the, King of the North that agitates that conflict.
So in the third of the Brazilian camp meeting, we showed that early agitation. Now we have, when we look at Ukraine, we can look at it as human beings. Concerned about the, the suffering of humanity. On the prophetic level, it has a lot to teach us. About human nature. Power and misogyny. But we should not lose sight of the fact that it is one part one sphere of influence of a much bigger conflict. We quoted Obama, who said his greatest regret was underestimating information as a weapon of war. Rome kept falling to Pyrrhus because he kept surprising them. With what his dysfunctional army could accomplish. They underestimated him. And Obama's greatest regret is what he underestimated. Part of that is an ignorance, an arrogance. as he spoke of Russia as a regional power. None of them were calling China regional. They mistook the threat and they know it now. But part of it was also about this fear and shame because of Iraq. Because I'm speaking to France, I'll have a little dig. Obama said he had to drag Europe kicking and screaming. In 2014. To the table to do anything about Russia. He expressed a type of envy at the support that Biden is getting from Europe. Germany was certainly a major part of that. But Macron has made mistake after mistake. Days before the invasion, he was still so sure he could work with Putin.
Obama was arrogant. But Macron has taken that to another level. In thinking how he could reason and work with Putin. Just bringing it back to Elder Parminder's studies, connecting the two. Biden is there just waging information war. Putin is saying, I'm not going to invade. Biden is saying, yes, you will. And days before the invasion, Macron is saying, no, he told me personally. He's going to take his troops out of Belarus as soon as they've done with their exercises. He did more to undermine the, this information war than to help it. But coming back to the United States, we read quotes. In the past, the US has sat on its hands as Russia waged information war. And then just the few quotes that I found Not hard, there's many more. They speak about the information war. About waging the truth as a weapon. About... About a battle of ideas. A war of narratives. The information wars of the 21st century. About four months of American-led information warfare. beginning in October of 2021, which they say was executed almost flawlessly. Intelligence as an instrument of state warfare. all to fight the disinformation weaponry of the Kremlin. Regardless of what looks hot in the current conflict, we have to go back to October. And even now, Between superpowers, the base of this conflict is information. It is in the battle of ideas, the war of narratives, where we find the fulfillment of the battle of Beneventum. as Pyrrhus' favourite weapon,
turns on him. As the external, so the internal. On the other side of that curtain is a battle of ideas. If you're in this movement, there won't be peace this side of the second advent. because it's the great controversy. The great war. The great political election. It's a battle of ideas. And you are part of that battle of ideas. Choosing for yourself what ideas you accept or reject. And for good or for evil, influencing the ideas of others. There is no peace in an election campaign. We're coming back to October in a moment. But I wanted to share a resource. If you want to, to read more on Zelensky, The good and the little bit of bad. That early conflict in 2021. How do you think Congress is updated or educated on Ukraine? I'm going, I'm going to share screen and open up to a web page. This is just a little detour. This is the Congressional Research Service. It is as the name suggests. This is how the legislative branch of the United States is informed. So if you're in Congress and you need to be informed, This is how you, a member of Congress, is educated. There are teams of people putting together documents to educate you. This is Ukraine background, conflict with Russia and US policy. It was last updated at the beginning of October last year. And if you were to go through some key points of this document, there are many pertinent points on 2014. on Zelensky's election, on 
on how politics in Ukraine developed between his election and October of last year. Zelensky's attempts to clean up corruption in Ukraine and some parts I found particularly interesting. Lists of the key uh, Ukrainian oligarchs. But it also describes how they even define who an oligarch, what an oligarch is. Because it's about more than just being wealthy. It also describes the conflict with Russia. Uh, in, in quite a bit of detail. Uh, this is their website where you, you would find these documents. It's been informing the legislative branch since 1914. They're located within the Library of Congress. And serve exclusively um, that branch of government. Their experts assist at every stage of the legislative process. So I just thought to mention that if you wished to know more of um, the cleanup of corruption Zelensky was attempting. But I, I still want to make the point. But even there, this is about the United States and Russia. And his cleanup was targeting Russian disinformation. Within a sphere of influence. So we need to keep on our prophetic glasses. Formalization of the message internally. Was the teaching of radical feminism. October 24 to 29. Of 2021. So it is in that context that we should see Panin. There are similarities and differences with between Panium and Raffia. But this occurs in the context of this conflict with Ukraine. And it's in October that the second part of um, that conflict begins. That the conflict that we are still in.
It's quote number one for the translators. This is from the Washington Post, October 30. A renewed buildup of Russian troops near the Ukrainian border has raised concern among some officials in the United States and Europe who are tracking what they consider irregular movements of equipment and personnel on Russia's western flank. The officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they weren't authorised to discuss the matter publicly said the troop movements have reignited concerns that arose in April when the largest build-up of troops by Russia near the Ukrainian border in years sparked an international outcry. So not much is being said publicly. They're speaking uh, anonymously. But behind the scenes, the United States is starting to monitor this conflict begin. On October 26, Ukraine's military confirmed it had used a Turkish-made drone against a position in Donbas, the first time Kyiv has employed the technology in combat, prompting an outcry from Moscow. Relations between Moscow and NATO are especially tense. Russia suspended its mission to NATO in Brussels on October 18. So the escalation is happening in these late weeks of October. And it's this that's sparking the war of narratives. I want to double down on this being an information war. I do not want to be specific at this camp meeting. about exact dates to bookend Panium. But I do want us to see the history of October. If we had time, we would go into November, but we won't have time. And I want to start it with October 3. The ICIJ That's an acronym. It stands for the International Consortium of Journalists.
It's a, a, an independent global network. of 280 investigative journalists and over 100 media organisations spanning more than 100 countries. And it is based in Washington DC. So we need to be familiar with the International Consortium of Journalists. to let them describe themselves. ICIJ is a small resourceful newsroom with our own reporting team, as well as a global network of reporters and media organisations who work together to investigate the most important stories in the world. Our network of trusted members encompasses 280 of the best investigative reporters from more than 100 countries and territories. We also partner with more than 100 media organisations from the world's most renowned outlets, including the BBC, the New York Times, the Guardian and the Asahi Shimbun to small regional non-profit investigative centres. The media biased fact check, which we've referred to before. Puts their factual reporting as very high. That's the highest you can go for their um, graph of factual reporting. This organisation has been behind some of the most major stories. Especially uh, data leaks. and investigating those data leaks. They were behind the Panama Papers of 2016. They won a Pulitzer Prize for that work. They go public with a story on October 3. What they release, they title the Pandora Papers. This Pan Pandora Papers is the largest leak of documents in history. Eleven point nine million documents. Secret financial records. Of many of the world's most famous and powerful people.
I want to take you to their website. This is the Investigative Consortium of Investigative International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. And one of their major investigations, or their only uh, major investigation right now, because it's quite ongoing. They went public on October 3. But it takes time to go through 11.9 million documents. But that work is what this consortium is currently undertaking. Notice their logo. for the Pandora Papers. They believe that with this leak, they have opened Pandora's box. To quote the page, the largest investigation in journalism history exposes a shadow financial system that benefits the world's most rich and powerful. The documents they have span five decades, 50 years. But most were created, they say, between 1996 and 2020. They put out a video on YouTube to announce the, the, um, the investigation. And I'm going, I'm going to quote that video. This re leak is really Panama Papers on steroids. This is the Pandora Papers because we think we are opening a box on a lot of things. These documents for the very first time showing the US as a tax haven itself. We are talking about some of the most famous people in the world who are in these documents. Presidents, Prime Ministers, Government Ministers, the King of Jordan, a number of very high profile Russian clients, people who are very close to Vladimir Putin. We're seeing them buying real estate. We are seeing them trading in shares using offshore companies. The biggest journalism partnership in history. We aren't looking at a couple of million dollars here, we are looking at trillions of dollars. Now, he, they say all that on October 3.
But on October 3, they don't even know what they have. They released more information they had been able to gather from these documents. In December. Back to their website. If you were to click on where it says investigation, I'll find it first because I don't know how to move the Zoom screen there. Sorry, the tab screen while I'm, I'm screen sharing. But if you were on their website, and on the top bar you clicked investigations, you scrolled down just a little to see what was highlighted. Their top post. The minute that Russia started showing its renewed aggression, they took this trove and they knew who to specifically target. And they highlight at the top their Russian archive. They're targeting, chasing the Russian elite. Remember, this is 11.9 million documents. So if you look at where it says latest, April 11, that's last Monday, they had, they had much more to share. And they say more is coming. They've made it a, pr a priority to go after Russia. And it's more than money. Because by tracing money, you find out who's close to the government. When a Russian billionaire says, I'm self-made, don't tie me or my billions to the Kremlin. By tracing how money has traveled, They can also trace Putin's friends. Those funding conflict. You find out a lot about politics when you have a window open into the financial system. So last week, they were able to share a lot more about Russia.
If this is an information war, there was the greatest release of information in history on October 3rd. And it was the perfect information if you're soon going to want to chase the Kremlin and sanction the elite. How do you know who is close to Putin? How do you know where their wealth came from? And how do you know where they're hiding it? A couple of articles from April 11. The ICIJ reveals more than 800 Russians behind secret companies in landmark expansion of public offshore database. The offshore leaks database spotlights vital new information on the covert financial activities of oligarchs, bankers and politicians as waves of Western sanctions target Putin loyalists. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists is making public a trove of new information about shell companies linked to Russians as part of a broader effort to spotlight the offshore world and the hidden wealth of Kremlin-linked figures in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This is this is the database that they have uh, formed. Fourth paragraph down for translators. The database now contains information on more than eight hundred thousand offshore companies, foundations, and trusts and links to people and companies in more than 200 countries and territories which can be publicly searched and downloaded. In addition to the data release, ICIJ and its partners are publishing new reporting that shows how Russian bankers, oligarchs and others in Putin's orbit have obscured vast wealth in tax havens with the help of Western enablers. The data release and the stories draw primarily from the Pandora Papers, millions of offshore financial records that fuel the 2021 global investigation. The release of Alpha Consulting data
it's it was Alpha Consulting, the Alpha Consulting firm that this article was addressing. Uh, on April 11th. It's part of ICIJ's ongoing effort to publish information from the Pandora Papers project. More data ties to the other providers will be published in the coming weeks. So it's an ongoing project. Another article from last Monday. Oh, my internet just crashed, but I'm back on. Thank you. So, Dean, everyone can hear me? <laughs> Thank you. They're not just targeting oligarchs. They're targeting bankers. Everyone in Putin's orbit. Russian bankers shuffled personal wealth offshore long before latest sanctions, Pandora Papers show. In this article, they go into eight executives from five of Russia's biggest financial institutions. And showed how and where from 2014 They have stashed their wealth. Third paragraph. The bank executives are part of a group of more than 4,400 Russians whose offshore activities are documented in the Pandora Papers. Uh, paragraph six, third paragraph of the quote. So the Pandora Papers uncover the hidden wealth of 4,400 Russians. including the names of at least 42 Russian billionaires whose combined net worth in 2021 was equivalent to 15% of Russia's entire gross domestic product. Of those 42 billionaires, at least 12 were targeted by recent sanctions. How do you know where to target? You need information. 
and they have information. Gerald Ryle, the director of ICIJ, quoting him from a video on their YouTube channel. Uh, that they uh, put up last Tuesday, April 12. He says, we believe this is one of the most important stories in the world. Uh, one other title from April 11. The oligarch's accountants, how PWC helped a Russian steel baron grow his offshore empire. PWC's Price Waterhouse Coopers. So it's not just Russia who should be in trouble. Another headline from April 11. Who helps Russian oligarchs secretly buy jets, yachts and other luxury playthings? Leaked documents expose the enablers who made it possible for the Rottenberg brothers, Gennady Timchenko, Alexander Ponomarenko and executives at Russian gas company Gazprom to live large. It's not just Russia who should be in trouble. This type of corruption and greed has not happened without enablers in the West. The Western enablers say they broke no laws in helping oligarchs. Yet experts say they do have a choice and every opportunity to identify their customer and decline the business. Without Wall Street, London, Zurich bankers, Lawyers, property dealers, yacht brokers, and other financial consultants, the oligarchs could not have secretly and safely moved vast funds into Western markets, Frank Vogel, a co-founder of Transparency International, told ICIJ in an email. Everyone in business has a choice, to do the right thing, serve the core public interest and act with integrity, or act in the shadows to secure more and more cash. The United Kingdom, Switzerland and Singapore are among countries that have condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine and sanctioned state-owned companies, including Russia's largest gas company, Gazprom. 
For years, leaked records show those same governments were home to Gazprom investments and shell companies and pit stops for suspicious transactions. We aren't naive enough to think that global corruption is coming to an end. But in the context of an information war between East and West, I should say between South and North, Information is behind not just Ukraine, but also this fight over the economy. Also the sanctions. Behind everything. And it, and it hasn't, it, it continues, didn't stop in October. They said they've got a lot more to release. But if you're the US government, if you want to hurt the King of the South, certainly got a, a, a much more professional toolkit with the Pandora Papers. With what they themselves believe to be Pandora's box. And that started October 3. which should have significance for us. <laughs> 2014 was an entire significant year. Is 2019 the same? 2021 also. January to now, but still we can see a clear step of prophecy in October. Not for everything that we should see in 2021, because all of this and especially this is relevant. We haven't discussed the internal of the United States. There is no year in history that has seen such an attack on abortion rights. Trans rights. all happening in the shadow of January 6. We haven't discussed Belarus, which is part of this conflict between North and South. We haven't discussed China or Syria. 
Ellen White says God gives us sufficient evidence. I am going to put that into our context. If we want to see 2021 as Panium, a change in the conflict between Russia and the United States, based on a war of narratives, that the United States finally starts to win. All of this being about information. At its fundamental level. Do, do we not have sufficient evidence? If you kneel with me, we'll close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for our sufficient evidence. We still don't see the future completely clearly. We trust that you'll prepare us for that too. I pray for each individual and myself that you will strengthen our faith. May we not manufacture hooks for ourselves. When the path gets rough, prepare us. And we pray that you will prepare Adventism. All who are willing. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone.